Hello, everybody. For the next eight minutes, I will be telling you about the life of the ingenious blacksmith, John Deere. John Deere, today, on Brilliant Biographies. John Deere was born on February 7, 1804. He grew up in the city of Rutland, Vermont. He was the fifth child of Sarah and William Deere. When he was four, his father, William, sailed to England in hopes of attaining supplies that they desperately needed for his new business. John received a letter from him later that summer. William was never seen or heard from again. Hi, I am Richard Collin, a professor at Texas A&M in the agricultural field. Now, John Deere was deeply affected by his father's sudden disappearance. However, his mother continued to run the family business without his father and raised him and his four siblings all at the same time. This also affected John Deere, and it gave him a very good work ethic that he kept for the rest of his life. John Deere did not let the lack of a father figure in his life affect him. He worked hard and got a full education at a public school. However, after he graduated, he wasn't sure what to do. Although after a little bit of searching around, he found a career that was perfect for him. That's when his famed industrial career began, as he took a job as a blacksmith's apprentice at age 17. While in this job, he found that he had quite a knack for it. He set up his first blacksmith trade four years later. This kept him busy for the next 12 years. Within that time, he met his future wife, Demarius Lamb. They were married in 1827. Together, they had five children, Francis Albert, Francis Alma, Jeanette, Ellen, and Charles. I am Neil Dahlstrom, and I am the author of The John Deere Story a biography of plowmakers John and Charles Deere. Now, John Deere was making reasonable money as a blacksmith. He could have easily done that for the rest of his life and made a decent living, had he chosen. However, he disliked the intense business environment, and in 1837, at age 33, he chose to move to Grand Detour, Illinois, where the business wasn't as intense. It was there that John Deere established the now world-renowned, multi-billion dollar industry, John Deere. John arrived in Grand Detour with the purpose of setting up a business while getting away from the intensity of a business life in Vermont. A year after arriving, he moved his wife to Marius and their five children there as well. Here, in Illinois, John Deere would write his name in history. There is a monument in Middlebury, Vermont, marking the shop where John Deere learned the blacksmith trade. More, next, on Brilliant Biographies. As a blacksmith, Deere continually found himself making the same repairs to plows again, and again, and again. Through this, he realized that the cast iron plow, designed for the light, sandy soil of the eastern United States, couldn't hold up to the heavy soils of the prairie land. He began experimenting with new plow designs and attempted to sell the finished product to local farmers. By 1838, he had been able to sell three plows. The number was up to 10 the next year, and 40 the year after that. Demand continued to increase, and in 1843 he began a partnership with Leonard Andrus, and by 1846 they had produced nearly 1,000 plows. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what was so special about his plow? Well, it's quite simple, really. Instead of the regular flat iron blade, John Deere invented a plow that had a curved blade made out of polished steel. This curved blade easily went through the dirt, and it, as you can see, was an instant success. In 1847, he decided Grand Detour was lacking a hub of commerce, so he just sold his blacksmith shop there to Andrus and moved to Moline, Illinois, located on the Mississippi River. There, he was able to take advantage of the water power and cheap transportation. He soon began importing British steel, which was successful in bringing up manufacturing, and by 1850, he was able to sell 1,600 plows. He also began to produce other tools to complement the plows. Hi, I am Thomas Lamp, an expert on 1800s agriculture. I believe that John Deere's start from 1838 to 1850 really was quite astonishing. He went from selling three plows in 1838 to selling 1,600 plows in 1850. This really was a very big accomplishment that is rarely seen and people really take for granted. However, as you can see today, he did not stop there. The next thing Deere did was to get a contract with Pittsburgh manufacturers to develop comparable steel plates. By doing this, he avoided the troubles of overseas importation. In 1855, he sold 10,000 plows. It became known as the plow that broke the plains. John Deere insisted on always making high-quality equipment. 
He was once quoted as saying, I will never put my name on a product that does not have in it the best that is in me. The Panic of 1857, which was a financial panic in the United States, caused by the declining international economy and over-expansion of the domestic economy, caused John Deere to have some struggles with business. However, after that ended, business resumed as usual. John then decided to give day-to-day -day operations to his son, Charles Deere. In 1867, Deere married his second wife, Lucinda Lamb. Together, they had four children, Emma, Hiram, Alice, and Mary. In 1868, John incorporated his business as Deere & Company. Later in his life, Deere gave the majority of his attention on civil and political affairs. He served as president of the National Bank of Moline, a director of the Moline Free Public Library, and was a trustee of the First Congregational Church. Deere also served as the mayor of Moline, Illinois for two years, but due to health problems such as chest pains and dysentery, he refused to run for a second term. John Deere died at his home on May 17, 1886. He is buried at Riverside Cemetery in Riverside, Illinois. However, when John Deere died, his business did not die with him. Today, there are John Deere factories in over 30 countries. John Deere also provides jobs for 67,000 people across the globe. The company's revenue in 2013 was $37.795 billion and is continuing to grow. Not only that, but that number shows no sign of slowing down anytime soon. In 2013, the company was ranked 85th on the Fortune 500 list, which ranks the companies with the highest revenues in America. The John Deere headquarters is located in Moline, Illinois. However, no matter how big these numbers get, it always goes back to one man and the problem he decided he was going to solve. Hi, I am Greg Ballinger, and I am an editor for the New York Times. Before I got my start there, I was a worker for John Deere myself, and I believe that the story of John Deere really is beautiful. He had a problem, and he decided to find a solution to that. In doing this, he ended up creating something great, something that is now worth billions and employs thousands. That all started with Deere refusing to leave his problem unsolved, and I think that really is a very beautiful story. John Deere's legacy was carried on by his son Charles, who continued to run the company. From there, several other people have been at the head. Today, John Deere has a wide variety of equipment they produce, including the cotton picker, the sugar cane harvester, the seed drill, the field sprayer, the combine, and the tractor. However, it all started with the simple plow. I've taught you about the life and times of John Deere and how he turned a problem into a multi-billion dollar industry. Whether you consider yourself a John Deere guy, an international guy, a guy for someone else, or are indifferent. indifferent. Everyone has to respect John Deere and what he did for the agricultural world. This has been Brilliant Biographies, John Deere. Thanks for watching.